Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Steve, and this is Apostles Lutheran Church. We're so glad you're, uh, you're tuning in today. It's a very special Sunday for us. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day, and we celebrate. But today, with this water, we will be baptizing Gabriella Clara Gutierrez. She will become God's child. We welcome her family, we welcome her, and I hope you stay tuned for this. Before I forget, I want to show you a very special, a special napkin that we'll use. This is custom made for this very special occasion. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. I want to also tell you that with God's help, we are moving forward with our plans to return to worship with a very small step on the 29th of November. That'll be the first Sunday in Advent. You will be hearing from us uh, through uh, social media, but also uh, by, um, by hard copy, it probably the, the newsletter and other means as to what you need to do to make a reservation to be with us. The reason we, we're making some reservations is we want to hold this to about 30 or 35 of us, okay? We're just starting. Now, that's not to discourage you. I want you to try, if you'd like to be here, to be here. But know also that we will continue to share with you each Sunday morning the service as we have videotaped it, uh, and you can continue to be with us that way. So make a choice. Be looking for the news um, from uh, Liz and from me as far as what you need to do before you arrive. Take a look at the epistle and see if that's not helpful. I want to also thank everybody for the patience they've had. We have had such a wonderful staff. They're doing such a great job. The school is back. We're being very careful and the, the children have been just a joy. Uh, you will see that uh, we continue uh, to do the children's time. I hope you're tuning in to Jen's uh, very special video presentations each week. If you haven't done that and you have young children, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, make sure you sit down and be with your, your young ones and, and take advantage of that wonderful experience. So again, welcome to worship. May God bless our worship today.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Hi, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and all of our extended family at Apostles Lutheran Church. It's good to see you again this week. Uh, time for uh, children and I have someone with me. This is Evan. Hi, Evan. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for coming and being here. Are, are you here with your dad? Yeah. He's doing a little taping. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. He does a good job. He manages to make even me look good, which is, let me tell you, it's a challenge. Well, are you interested in, Evan, what's in this box? I know I am. I'm a little curious. You don't know what it is, right? And neither do I. I do not know what this is. Hmm. You want to take it out for me? See, if, if all my friends were here, this is, this is the way we would do it. Oh, somebody knew what a special day it is today. Do you know what we're doing later in the service, Evan? Do you, do you remember at all? What does that shell have to do with things? And this behind me. Take a look at this. What maybe is going to happen? What do we do when we pour the water on the heads of the little ones? We say, you're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let me see that. Isn't that cool? I'll tell you what this is. I, I'd call this kind of a medal or medallion. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? It has some weight to it. And it has... The shell with three drops of, I, uh, that's water, right? Drops of water. And I think one is for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. We baptize in the name of the Trinity. And on the back is the inscription in celebration of your baptism. I want to show you something else behind me. This is just the most beautiful thing, and maybe we can get a close-up later um, to show you both of these, but I will tell you, this is um, Gabriel Clara Gutierrez, child of God, baptized today, November 13th, at Apostles Lutheran Church. This has been made especially for uh, Gabriel. Isn't that beautiful? And then this medal, I assume, will also maybe be a gift that we, we share with her. So, Evan, do you remember anything about your baptism? Do you remember anything at all about it? Nope. Did somebody pour water on your head at one time? Did they tell you about that? I bet your dad remembers, maybe, yeah. yeah. And do you know the most important thing you need to remember about your baptism? even though maybe you can't remember the day, because most of us are baptized as little babies. And at home, you ought to ask your mom and dad, when was I baptized? That's a good thing. Say, when was I baptized? Okay, but Evan, you were baptized, and I, what I want you to remember is that day was special because God claimed you as his son, as his follower, Jesus in Jesus, we are related. We are sons and daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ. There was a cross that we traced on your forehead, I bet. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Absolutely an exciting, beautiful day. In honor of that, you'll see that I'm wearing my green stole and my alb today. I don't always do that, but this is too special to let it, let it go. Well, this is wonderful. Somebody knew something about this Sunday, and I think, uh, I have a suspicion, I know, it may be an administrator at the church here that I serve. It could be. 
is her, what's her name? Is it Liz? Yeah? Maybe it may have been her. I think so. What a great idea. Anyway, reminder though, I need all of you to remember we need something to talk about each week and it's very special when it's from you. So send it to us, call us, let us know and we'll get it into Pastor's box. I love this box. And then we can share it and talk about it. Evan, you, you have no idea what a treat this was for me. Thank you for coming today. And I look forward to sharing more time with you. But we're going to make sure not to forget to put this back for the baptism. I'm going to put the medallion back in the box. And will you say to everybody, will you say, have a good week and wave at them, Evan? Have a good week. Have a good week. See you next time. This morning, our reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Though we do not know and cannot calculate the day of Christ's return, we live faithfully in the here and now as we anticipate the day when we will be given eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you have been doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, and the, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents, for to all those who have, more will be given." and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. You know, alongside the great tragedies of literature, such as Hamlet, we should place the story of the parable we heard this morning. For it's, uh, it's the tragedy, really, of a one-talent man. As I grow older, and as I think about this again, perhaps what I ought to call it is Use it or lose it. Some of you know very well what I'm talking about. The parable talks of four men. There's one master and there are three servants, right? And what happened to them is interesting. The first two servants serve really as backdrop for the story of this tragedy of the one man, the one talent man. The master's about to leave on a trip and he calls his servants to him to assign their responsibility while he's away. And he does this by giving to each servant a certain portion of the property. And they're to manage this then while he's gone. It's interesting to note that this is no small uh, assignment. A talent was worth 6,000 denarii. And if you remember, we learned a few weeks ago, a denarii was worth one day's labor. So 6,000 days labor in one talent. That's a valuable investment. 
I think the first thing that strikes me about Jesus' parable and what he might be saying to us is, we should not fail to notice that the master gave to them, gave to them this, uh, what he entrusted. The master gave to each according to their ability, we're told. We know that God is a giving God, that God is more willing to give than we are to openly receive, that we could be overwhelmed by the good gifts that God gives us. And if we look at the picture of Scripture, we see from the very beginning, God gives the newly created world to human beings and calls them uh, to be good stewards over all the, the earth. God gives the covenant to Abraham and his people. God then gives deliverance to the people enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt and guides them to the promised land. Finally, gives, God gives the law and the prophets, and yes, God sends his own son, Jesus Christ. God gives every good gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God gave. That's the first thing I hear here. The master gives to the servants with the hope that they will, will share and will multiply the joy. Now, many believe that the most important religious question that we can ask is this. What must I do to get, right? What must I do to get this or that? The question of grace is this. What must I do with what I've been given? That's your question and my question as baptized Christians, as those who follow Jesus. It's not so much what we're going to get, but what we can do with this marvelous gift we've already been given. The men in Jesus' parable are not confronted with a job they must do to get something, but they are given a gift, aren't they? They are given these talents, not to hide and protect, but to manage to the glory of their master. So the master takes into consideration the abilities of each of the servants. And that's also important. All persons are not created equal, at least in respect to this parable. And God knows this and never requires more than we can do with what we have. But he does require that we do the absolute best we can with whatever we've been given. In the parable, the third man was given less than the first two. He was given less not because the master didn't like him or there was something wrong with him. No, he was given less because the master wanted to be fair. He knew what that man could handle and he wanted to give him something that was manageable. The reason for the servant's reaction is difficult then to establish, but perhaps it had something to do with the fact that uh, he was fearful that he'd fail? Or maybe he, he asked himself, if I had been given more, maybe I could have done more. Whatever the excuse was, we know there was a problem when the master returned. Here's a slide, uh, shows Edward Hale. He once said this, I, I love this, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. That's powerful. It may be that the master had hoped to discover that same attitude in each of his servants as he was gone. I certainly think that that is the expect, expectation that, that God may have of each of us. How good it would be if amid the frustrations we feel as we work in the Lord's vineyard, we could remember that while we cannot do everything, we can always do something. Don't let everything get in the way of your something, that peace that you can share. And then I want to say this. When the master returns, notice it's faithfulness that is rewarded. It is faithfulness that is rewarded. The five-talent servant returns double what he has been given. The two-talent servant also doubles what he's been given. But both are commended 
for their faithfulness. It's not necessarily how much money they've made, that they doubled the investment. That was great. But it is faithfulness that the master respects. Well done, he says, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in granting small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. He didn't say, well done, good and successful servant. You're at the top of the, uh, you know, top 10 successful executives of the year. No, he said, you've been faithful, and that's what matters to me. Now, notice these men were uh, commended not so much for their success, but their faithfulness. And I think that means this. Faithfulness is not the same as faultlessness. You know, you're not expected to be perfect. None of us are. God sent Jesus Christ to forgive our shortcomings and to make it possible for us to get up and renew ourselves. And so it's faithfulness and not the faults we have that may get in the way uh, of our living. Martin Luther King put it this way. I love this. Somebody asked Martin Luther King, what are you going to put on your tombstone? What, what would you like to see there? And this is what he said. He said, I tried to love somebody. He would try to love somebody. Note the profound insight here. He is not so presumptuous to assume that he can love the way he should. So he said, I, you know, I'm going to try to love. And then he goes on, not everybody, but may it be that at least I love somebody. Remarkable in his faithfulness and his willingness to uh, assume his, uh, his limitations and yet open himself to what God could do. So this is faithfulness. Trusting God that we understand that the task before us is something we do best when we do it in his good graces. And though we may fail, we are still faithful. Though we do fail, we are still faithful. And then this, before God, we are not achievers, but receivers. We are not achievers, but receivers. The language of achievement stands in bold contrast to the language of recipiency. I found it. You've heard that before. I would say that is the language of achievement. I did it, you know. God found us. Now that is the language of recipiency. That is acknowledging that God does the searching and God claims us. And just as we will baptize uh, Gabriel Clara Gutierrez, we know that God's working within our lives is always his searching and pulling us in. So, take a look at this one. As Christians, we live the life, death of Christ when we see all that we have, from family and friends and church to the strengths and talents with which we pursue our vocation and overcome hardships, to the planet on which we live. All are not ours by achievement, but our gifts. All are not ours by achievement, but by gifts. As Christians, we are gifted people. And I come back to where I started at this point. We are blessed with gifts. The best of the gifts we have is the assurance that God's grace is for us, that we are accepted and loved as a child of God. And the faith-generated response to God's lavish gifts right here at Apostles Brandon was not experienced in order for us to protect ourselves or defend ourselves from those things that might in some way be aggressive, would bring us down, but rather to invest our lives in the community, in the community of God's love. It is not that we have made our mortgage payments, that we protected the liturgy from corruption, that we chose this Bible translation over this Bible translation, 
so that we can go back to our Lord and say, Lord, we protected all of this. We didn't want anybody to get in the way. Rather, God, our master, will look to see that we used the message of the gospel by giving it away, by giving it away in our service to others. God entrusts us with a gift money cannot buy. We are stewards of God's good grace. We are stewards of that grace. And we can bury it, keeping it safe and untarnished, or we can invest ourselves fully in the gift of our baptism, making it active, making it productive, as it transforms ourselves, our community, and the world. And my friends, that is good news. Let us pray. Oh God, it is so easy to be paralyzed by fear. The fear of making a mistake, the fear of looking foolish, the fear of failing to measure up, the fear of disappointing you. When we are afraid, help us to remember that we are already yours, loved and valued before we accomplish anything. Then give us the courage to dare bold things in your name, confident that you who redeem Good Friday can certainly use even our failures to do your will in the world. We pray this in your precious name. Amen.
We welcome the Gutierrez family and their sponsors to the font for this wonderful day. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to the new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents this child for baptism? We do. You have presented Gabrielle Clara Gutierrez for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God, do you desire to have Gabrielle baptized in Christ? I do. As you bring Gabrielle Clara to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and to the Holy Supper, and to teach her the Lord's Prayer. We want her to learn the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and place in her hands also the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Gabrielle may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and through deed, to care for others and the world God has made, and to work for justice and for peace. Do you promise to help Gabrielle grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. Sponsors, this is your chance. <laughs> do you promise to nurture Gabrielle, Clara, in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism? and in communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. I do. Very good. Thank you. People of God, that's all of us listening, along with all of us. We're so glad we're, we're doing this together. People of God and representatives of the Christian church into which we are baptized. Will you, as members of the holy body of Christ, accept and trust to help and support the growth of Gabrielle Clara into the fullness of our Christian faith and life? If so, answer at home and we'll answer here. We will. We will. Ah, beautiful. I ask you then to pro profess your faith in Christ. Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? We do. we do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by the word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. 
at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are here washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. All right, Mom. It's time for the washing here. I'm going to try to be as safe as I can, but I do want to do the washing here. This is baptism. Gabrielle, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, she was good. Wow. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Gabrielle Clara with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Um. All right. This is some very special oil. Why to spill? I'm going to come over. Gabrielle, Clara, you have sealed, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever, forever. The candle. You're doing just great. And then you can bring it down here. Perfect. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Ah, beautiful. Let us welcome Gabby, if I can use her common name, into the Lord's family. We welcome you as a member of the church, the body of Christ. As baptized people, we are ministers of Jesus Christ and children of God. May God bless you as you join with us in living and working together as the baptized children of God. Congratulations to Gabrielle. God bless you, Gabby. Your family, we love you so much. Sponsors, we thank you so much. And all of you at home, celebrate with us this new life in Christ. Welcome. <laughs> Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, 
We stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature, like our beautiful beaches in the Gulf. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, Search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins, release our desire for control, and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors, especially Maria Mitchell, Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. You've heard me say today that God is the great giver of every good gift. If there's anything that we remember today, it is that we are recipients. We don't need to achieve the grace of God. It's freely given. And so, we freely give of what we can to the church and to the world. And so this is your time, your time to share whatever you can with us. We're continuing to serve not only you as our congregation, but we are reaching out to our community with food and supplies, with prayers and hope. And you can be a part of that. So take a moment now, write a check, or go online and send us anything you can to help us continue to extend this wonderful ministry at Apostles Lutheran Church. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts. <laughs>
Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art in who heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will thy be, done, be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.